Welcome along to our first tutorial in Adobe After Effects where we're going to be creating a simple special effect called Lightning Hands to go over the top of this video. I'll just give you a preview of the finished copy and what it's going to look like. Yeah, I know it's a little bit tacky, but we're going to be creating that. Oops, I'll just close that. We're going to be creating that effect today in Adobe After Effects. Now, if you haven't heard of After Effects before, it's basically Photoshop for video, where you can apply all sorts of different special effects to your video footage. Okay, so to get started, we're going to pop over into After Effects here, and if you've got the welcome screen, just make a new project, or you can go to File, New, and choose New Project. Okay, won't save that one. Okay, so when you make a new project, you should have an empty screen looking like this with a whole bunch of different panels open. Okay, the first panel you need to know about is the project panel over here on the left hand side. This is where we're going to import all of our footage. So if I bring up my folder here, there's two things that we're going to need to create our video today. There's this acting video. Okay, if I just give it a quick preview, I'll just resize it. It's basically me moving my hands around. Okay, there's no lightning in there just yet. Okay, so we pick that up and simply drag it over to our project panel, and you see that the acting video is now in our project. The other thing we're going to need is this voltage sound. So drag the voltage sound over into the project panel as well, and now you should have a video and the voltage sound. Okay, just like Premiere Pro, after Effects has a timeline at the bottom of the page, which you need to drag your footage to to get started. Okay, so over here, I'm just going to grab my acting footage and simply drag it down to the timeline, and you'll see that it appears in the timeline. If you press the space bar, you can get a preview of what's going on in the preview window. Now, if you're listening carefully, there is a tiny little bit of sound in that video that we don't want. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here on the left, where I've got my acting video name, I'm just going to hit this little arrow and expand that. And you see we've got either transform or audio that we can adjust. I just want to adjust the audio. And the audio levels, just turn it right down. It goes a fair way down, actually, to minus 192 decibels. But it's all the way down, which means we've got no audio now in that clip. Okay, so if you play that clip again, it's obviously going to be mute. And there is no audio there. Another way to do it, just hit this little speaker over here. And that'll take the audio out of that uh, that track. Okay, so it's up to you how you get rid of the audio. Anyway, let's go back to the start there. Next thing we need to do is probably just trim off the bits we don't need. So if I fast forward that a bit, you can see that there's a bit of time there where my hands just sit together and do nothing. So about there, just past the one second mark, is a good point to start this video. So if you hover around the start of your clip there, you can simply trim it off like you'd usually do in Premiere. Okay, and you can move that back to the start. So now we haven't got that awkward weight at the start. It should just straight up open my hands and move them around for a bit and then they close. And when they close, I do a weird little thing at the end there. I guess we don't need to see that either. We can probably trim it to about that point there. So I'm just going to grab the end of it, bring it back, and that trims off the end of my video. So now I've just got it where my hands open up, spin around for a sec, and then close. And that's my video. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the start here. And the next thing I'm going to put in is the lightning. And the way you put in the lightning is simply right-click in this box over here, go to New, and we choose Solid. Now our box is going to come up asking you for some names. Simply call it Lightning, leave the rest of the settings as they are and click OK. Now you get a box over the top of your uh, preview window, window here, so don't worry about that. Your footage is still behind that. What we're going to do next is bring in a lightning effect. And basically After Effects creates the lightning for us. So what you need to do is go to your window menu and make sure that you've got effects and presets opened up. Okay, I've already got it open over here on the right side of my page. You'll see a little search box where you can actually search for different effects, and the one we're looking for is Advanced Lightning. So if you start typing Advanced Lightning, you'll see that it pops up. Simply pick it up, drag it, and drop it on top of your preview window. And you're going to get some pre-made lightning, which already looks pretty cool. 
What we're going to do next is go over to our properties for this lightning over here, or the effect controls, and have a bit of a play. You can go through all these different settings, and you can see it's going to change the look of your lightning. I'm not going to go into that in this video, I just want to keep it short and sweet, but feel free to have a bit of a play. Okay, just for one example, forking here, if you turn that percentage up, you're going to get more forks in your lightning. Turn it down, and obviously it's going to take the forks out of the lightning. So it was on about 25%, so I'll just keep it on that. I think that looked pretty good. Okay, so have a, have a bit of play with those if you'd like to just test your lightning out and see how it's going to look. All right, once you've had a bit of a play, the first thing you want to do is change the lightning type. So you should see the lightning type option here, and it says direction. If you hit the drop down box, we want to change it to a lightning strike. And what that's going to do is give us two little points at the end of our lightning that can actually be picked up and moved around. Okay. So you've got start and end points there for your lightning. Doesn't matter where they are just yet, we will be moving them into their start position very shortly. Okay. One thing to make this look a little bit more realistic is add a bit of a blend mode to it. So simply, while you've still got this lightning layer selected, go up to your layer panel up the top, head down to blending mode and choose add. It's just going to make it a little bit brighter and get rid of that glow which looked a little bit ugly before. That just helps it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get this lightning moving in time with our hands. It's a little bit tedious, but not too hard. Okay, so what I want you to do is move these end points of the lightning into the starting position. Okay, where our lightning's going to start. Okay, so it's roughly going to be about there. I know it looks a little bit dodgy where it's sitting at the top of our hands, so we can fix that a bit later. But what we're going to do is just fast forward our video to where my hands just open up. So somewhere around there. Okay, and I'm going to trim that lightning to that start point. So this is where our lightning is going to start. Okay. Now, to get our lightning in the first position, what we're going to do is up here, we've got the word origin and we've got the word direction. I want you to do the little stopwatch next to origin and next to direction. That's added in a keyframe just here to show our start point for our lightning. So get it into the palm of my hands there. Okay, you might zoom in a little bit here so you can see this a bit better. So I've roughly got it there in between the fingers. Okay, and what we're going to do now is just keep jumping up 10 frames at a time up our timeline and keep moving this lightning in time with my hands. So the way we do that, well, probably not even 10 frames at a time, probably five frames at a time, but I'm going to press page up and page down to navigate through my timeline now. So I'm going to press page down to move forward a little bit. And as my hands open up, I'm going to move the lightning to match them. Okay, and I'm going to press page down a few more times and get that lightning matching my hands. So I'm going about five frames at a time. So I'll press page down, one, two, three, four, five and then just keep moving this lightning around with my hands. Okay, a little bit fiddly. This is the tedious process that takes a little while. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit here again to get this right. But make sure that lightning's hitting the palm of my hands, not going over the top of any fingers. All right, see the bottom hand moving a little bit now as well. So make sure you keeping this lightning in the center of my palms and just keep pressing page down. You can do this pretty quickly. Keep that lightning in the center of my hands. Okay, feel free to fast forward the video here just so you can skip past this bit nice and quickly. Okay, about halfway there. Whoops, the hands are starting to close up now. making this white circle here. I'm not sure what that is exactly. Now I can probably zoom back in a little bit here to make life easy. So I'll just hit this little drop down box and go back to 100%. I'm just doing three frames at a time now. Just my hands are closing pretty quickly. 
try and avoid it going over the top of my fingers and hand. I'm just sticking it in between my fingers there. We're nearly done. Alright. So that's about it. Okay, so what you can do now with this red section here, you can actually trim that back to where the mouse cursor is about there. So my lightning will disappear just there at the end. Okay, so let's take that back now. I'm going to go back and just fit that in my window. I'm going to press space bar to preview it and see how it's looking. So that lightning now is pretty much following my hands. Which looks pretty good. Okay, so the footage looks good. We just need a bit of sound in there to make it seem a little bit more realistic. So up here in effect controls, just next to that you'll see the project panel again. Bring the project panel back up and look for your voltage sound. Simply drag it down to your timeline and whack it in. Now this sound goes for ages. I think it's about a 45 second sound. And our video is 7 seconds. Okay, so we will be trimming bits off this. So what we will do is just play the video and have a listen to the sound and see where it starts to kick in and sound good. Whoops. Bring the playhead back. So about there is where the sound started to really kick in. So what I'm going to do is trim the start of that sound up to where the playhead is. And I'm going to move it back. probably want the sound to start as my hands open up and that lightning appears. So about there. And I'm just moving this bottom voltage layer, which is our sound layer, back to there. So let's have a listen. Okay, so that's sounding good, but the sound keeps playing because it's um, so long. So what I'm going to do is double click on this bottom layer, the voltage layer. You'll see it comes up here in a window of its own. You can simply start trimming it back. Okay, and it's going to come all the way back to roughly in line with when the voltage disappears. Oh, sorry, when the electricity disappears. So about there. So hit that little cross up the top here just to close that layer. I'll bring my video back now. Let's just see how that sounds near the end. Cool. Cuts off pretty quick. So what we could possibly do here is make that sound fade out just by using keyframes again. So what I might do is probably just get it fading out from about this point onwards. Okay. So what I'll do is over here where I've got my voltage named, hit the little arrow and expand the audio and I'm going to hit that little stopwatch next to audio levels. It inserts the first keyframe and when I get over to about this point here, once my electricity has disappeared, we want that fully faded out. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that decibel level all the way down. So hopefully now our audio fades out. Let's have a listen. Probably went a bit too quick. I might click back on that keyframe there about that point there. Maybe put it a bit higher. Maybe minus 192 was a bit of a bad call. Let's see. That's better. Alright, so we're pretty much done. Let's have a look one last time. There we go. That's heaps better. Alrighty. So what we can do now, uh, we can probably export this. So, I'm going to go to File, go down to Export. There's a few ways you can do this. I'm just going to go to the first one, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Alright, so I already had one before. I'll just delete that one. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so in your Adobe Media Encoder Q now, let's get that out of the way so you can see it a bit better, we've got our video sitting here. Okay, it just asks you what type of file you want to save it as. I'd recommend H.264 or maybe even H.265. We're just going to go with H.264 because it's a common file. And if you want, you can choose whatever size you want it to be. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to match the source, which is full HD. And when you're good to go, or if you want, you can actually choose where you want to save it. Okay, my computer's a little bit slow, but that should let me save it. Yeah, I'll save it in the right folder, so I'll save it there and press the play button at the top. And you'll see down the bottom, it's just going to run through, encode that video, and it will get it working. Okay, I'll just pause the video for a sec while that runs through, and I'll come back when it's done. 
All right, so I'm back again. You can see that my footage is now all done. It's got the green tick over here, which means it has exported successfully. Okay, so in the folder where I saved that, here's our video. I'll just have to make it a little bit smaller when this opens. I think it's going to come out pretty big. There we have it. Our first video in Adobe After Effects done where you've created some lightning coming out of your hands. Okay, so you could probably shoot lightning out of your hands if you wanted to and zap one of your mates. There's all sorts of things you can do with that effect. You could probably make lightning come out of the sky and hit the ground. Okay, the options are endless there, so have a bit of play with that for the rest of the lesson and see if you can make some cool lightning effects using After Effects. I'll see you in the next video.